Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. I write for anysportanytime.ca. Uh, with me as always is Jim Kerr, who writes for Kersey's Notebook.blogspot.com. Let's get right into it, Jim. Uh, let's start off with the Edmonton Eskimos and their big win this uh, week in BC on Saturday night. The Eskimos had come in uh, to the game trailing the Lions by two points and uh, tied in their season series at one point uh, or one game apiece. So they're like there are a million stories we can talk about on oh, this yeah. one. Uh, Ricky Ray, uh, let's start with Ricky Ray. He ran for 139 yards, including the winning touchdown uh, himself. In fact, by the middle of the third quarter, he had more rushing yards than the rest of the Eskimos combined. What's up with that? Well, let's just start by saying his new nickname is the Running Man. The Running obviously. Man, obviously, it's, it's, it's just the, the natural Ricky Ray. You know, yeah, it just works. Oh, that was amazing, and yeah. it, to me, it was a it was a case of. The leader on your football club saying, well, we've had a lot of must-win games this season. But this is really a must-win game. But if we don't win this game, there probably won't be any more must-win games. Because this gives them uh, the tiebreaker should they end up tied. It ties them in the standings with three games left. Uh, the the schedules for both clubs aren't easy, nope. so it's not well. Uh, they're not playing themselves, <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, or themselves. Uh, the other <laughs> one's over again. Yeah, yeah. So each each club has a, a hard schedule to yeah. to, uh, to round out the season. Edmonton plays Saskatchewan twice, yeah, I believe. No kidding. And uh, this puts them in position to, you know, to maybe make that final push. But to see them play like that, it's uh, to see Ricky Ray take over the game. We haven't really seen fashion. that, I would say, this season. We've seen it before, but probably yeah. not this season. And you think, nice you think, you know, running the ball, you, you know, he's putting himself in a lot of danger, but uh, the, way, the, the way it's gone this season, standing behind that offensive line is a pretty dangerous spot, too, no so kidding. to see. But they, they, well were, yeah, they were crafty with some of those plays to get him, uh, to get him those rushing yards. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's good, it's good play calling, it's good uh, strategy by the coaches, but for Ricky Ray to step up and, and play like that, I, I when I when I realized what was going on, I couldn't believe yeah, totally a the number of rushing yards in general, almost three hundred and fifty for the game. Totally after that, and SEC. b the fact that Ricky Ray, our quarterback, ran for almost one hundred and forty yards. Yeah, no, and exactly. Daniel Porter had a, a decent game Especially as well. Especially fourth quarter, the guy just turned it on. It was every every single handoff with Daniel Porter. They might as well just listen, go. Ray. Yeah. I'm the running back. <laughs> I would take this. I'm the running back. Now, there's a reason that Daniel Porter took so many running plays, and that's because the S didn't really have any receivers left after the end of the game. Yeah. Injury's a big uh, big issue in this game. Uh, Kelly Campbell, for instance, was ruined, ruined in the second half yeah. by a uh, brutal lines hit. Uh, Kamal Peterson, uh, Achilles, uh, Achilles injury reopens or re hurts himself, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is with Achilles. Exactly. That, bad news either way, though, for him. No, that's... so injuries all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess, you know, that that's a, an example. Of, well, that's football, first yeah. of all. Injuries and football. It's going to happen. They go hand in hand. But that's an example of a guy getting... Um, Getting a chance to maybe get some more touches and literally running with it, yeah. but that that was that was awesome. And for Ray to get the game-winning touchdown too, just to just to touch on that again, yeah. For him to get the game-winning touchdown is just uh, you know a, a perfect end to a, a good night for him. No, that's exactly it. Uh, another great story, well, a great story from the Eskimo side of things <laughs> at least, is that the BC Lions forgot to put veteran kicker Paul McCallum back on the roster after being on the injured uh, list uh, earlier on in the week. So backup kicker Sean White doesn't even have doesn't even have his gear with him. His no. gear they didn't even bring it to the game. Uh, he came in and he played pretty well kicked a with f- with Paul McCallum with, yeah, took, yeah, with, with his pads. So Paul McCallum, oh I'm not on the roster? Yeah, the coach is going Here you go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I wasn't almost. I, I was almost left off the roster for this week here. But we got me just in time. No kidding, yeah, exactly. I got you on close. just before the deadline there. Yeah, uh, that would have been disastrous. My backup would have had to come in, and we don't want to. We see don't him. want that. No. Uh, so yeah, I guess the the other thing is, is Sean White came in, um, forty eight yard field goal with no yeah. time left to put the game into overtime. I mean, kind of clutch. You see Paul McCallum on well, the side. Yeah. You know you. exactly. I mean, in terms of field goals, you're not going to go much further than that. <laughs> no <for> kidding. A, <laughs> I don't know what his range is, yeah. but... Over 50 is probably that. not that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, I guess, just made it an exciting end. I was sitting there going, oh, for Christ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. But, but it was good. And then uh, I guess the last the last part is, you know, they went in overtime. And, uh, the Eskimos were up 10 points with three minutes left uh, of the of the game, and then they go into overtime, but at least they win it. That's, uh, that's Why what is the CFL of. a little more fun to watch than the NFL? Why is that, Jim? Overtime. 
Not even that. You're up by 10, ten points. Three. Three minutes after an NFL game, it's over. Yeah, oh. exactly. They just run out the clock. Not here, no. You're, You're hugging and points. shaking hands. Yeah, and... exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's switch gears over to the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Oilers endured their second loss of the season, uh, and they did it to the Flames Saturday uh, on the National Game Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, the game set us ups and downs. We saw the rookies were up and then down. We saw the veterans were up and then down. Uh, what did you think of the game Saturday night? Well... Obviously, it wasn't their best game. They, you know, like you say, it was up and down. There was, there was good parts and bad parts. They Overall, they ended up losing, dropping a 2-2 two and two on the year. I kind of, I think a lot of us in the city figure that it'll be a season like that where they're, you know, win a couple, lose a couple. Yeah. Maybe win five, lose three. And that's you know, okay. Yeah, they're, I think they're, they're a 500 team right now. And mm-hmm. that's, just looking at the number of changes they've had throughout the season, that's good. Mm-hmm. You know, the... There's, it's going to take some time, really, for, for everything to come together. And uh, the fact that they, they're not 0-4 That's is, nice. is nice. Yeah, but you had to figure uh, Calgary was going to come out a little more feisty after, after the Bears 4 nothing yeah. the first time around. But, you know, the, like you say, the, some of the rookies, are they're, they're still coming into their own. And you see, you see positives in their game. And like Sean Horkoff calling out uh, Taylor Hall about shift two and two the shifts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what his average was on Saturday night, but I'm sure it was uh, in the back of his mind. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Nikolai Habi Habi Bulin, uh, goaltender for the Oilers, had uh, a couple of soft goals, but overall looked pretty solid. Uh, you know, are we ever going to see like there's another four or five days between next game? But are we ever going to see the backups play? Oh yeah, well they'll they'll get a chance, but I think right now, since uh, Habi Bulin was kind of limited in the preseason because they were looking at these other guys. Yeah. Um, my thoughts are they're probably trying to get him uh, get him into a rhythm to start the season because sure. the, the last thing you want is to to break up his his uh, the start of his season and so that he doesn't get into that rhythm until later on and the, some of the goals were soft but if you look at the other end of the ice yeah, um, Mika Kiprasov. Kiprasov had a shocker as well yeah, uh, okay. on a couple of those goals so you know uh, I think we'll uh, yeah I think uh, Happy Bullen will will probably not play uh, you know the first 10 games, He'll, yeah. they might have him in, uh, they'll probably start him uh, on Thursday, and I'm sure we'll see some of the backups, which one, I don't know, yeah. but uh, uh, since we've got the three-headed monster going, really. but I, I think this is a case of getting Happy Bullen into a, into a rhythm, let him feel the game, and he's been playing well so far, I, I think, so. Good. Uh, we're going to switch over to the National Basketball Association, uh, Washington Wizards. So, Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> yeah. Gilbert Arenas of the famous Bring Your Gun to the Locker Room Day uh, <laughs> last year. Uh, you know, early last week, he told his coach he had a sore knee, right? And he, yeah, didn't, he wasn't going to play. Fair. Right. Wasn't yeah. going to play that, that game. It was a preseason game. Uh, we understand. No problem. Then, so he doesn't play the game. After the game, he tells reporters, like that's not going to get back to the coach. But anyways, he tells reporters that he faked the injury so fellow wizard Nick Young could get more playing time. Uh, first off, uh, Jim, it's now been reported that he was fined fifty thousand uh, dollars by the Wizards for faking the injury. Is that enough? Well, that's noble of him. To do, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. I mean, it's preseason. Yeah. At the end of the day, who cares? But uh, I think it's a case of like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Come on, man. Exactly. As uh, some doing? of those NFL guys say, but you know, uh, is it enough? Yeah, sure. Whatever, you know, right? For him, it doesn't matter. Fifty thousand dollars, sweet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that would end me. Well, but. exactly, but not him. So I mean, yeah, I wouldn't fake an injury. You would think that Arena still would want to play a few games, considering he had what fifty games suspension last year. What, yeah, what about that? Well, I don't know what's yeah. going through that guy's mind. No kidding. But he, he did get into a game eventually. Yeah, he so mm-hmm. so there he goes and plays Thursday night. And then, so two nights later, he plays. And three minutes, Jim, three minutes after coming off the bench into the game, he hurts his groin. What, and goes out of the game. Now he's got a real injury. Yeah. <laughs> you just... It's well just one played, mess sir. up after one. Well mess. played. Exactly. <laughs> what is it? What? I don't know what he's doing. You, you can't write this stuff, Jim. No, you really can't. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I see these kinds of stories when I'm trying to think of ideas for blogs. I see these and I go... Yeah, exactly. I appreciate Scoops. that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what's happening with that guy, though. Maybe he wants out of Washington. Maybe he's trying to make it uncomfortable for them. So yeah. they go, you know what? But then again... You don't want to do that because who else is going to take you? That's exactly if they go, it. look at this clown. Well, if there's anything, if we look at the NHL, um, you know, Dallas Stars didn't want Sean Avery. If anything, it sounds like Gilbert Arenas can go play for the New York Rangers. 
That's true. Yeah, I think that's that true. They, they like to take trouble, people like that, like Derek Bugard for $2.5 million a year. Uh, okay, we're going to carry on. We're going to come to quick hits now. Uh, so Jim's going to answer some questions uh, relatively quickly for Jim. Well, you know, I can't really talk. do anything like that quickly. <laughs> as, uh, as quickly as I ask them, hopefully, here. So the uh, Major League of uh, Major League's Baseball playoffs are still going on. Uh, the Texas Rangers are playing the New York Yankees, and the difference in payrolls between the Rangers and the Yankees is over $150 million, which is, which is crazy that, um, that a payroll would be $150 million, but the difference is $150 yeah. million. It's kind of like our paycheck. That's crazy. right. That's right. I'm, I, no, you've got... I, 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 don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're both the Texas Rangers. That's right. We're going to be <laughs> lower than where we are. Uh, does money buy a championship, Jim? Well, I guess we'll see. Yeah. In in some ways, you could say, yeah, it does it. Well, it may not buy you a championship, but it buys you a damn good shot at it. Oh, sure. But at the same time, I think most people would prefer to see a team that doesn't have a payroll in the two hundred millions of dollars exactly. uh, win. But uh, like you say, it's amazing that there could be uh, a disparity of a hundred and fifty <laughs> million crazy. dollars. Absolutely. And crazy. If I heard that a payroll was a hundred and fifty million dollars, I'd be like, whew, yeah. man, like. By by a championship, <laughs> exactly. Never mind the difference. That, yeah, that's that's. How I, mean, I guess we'll see though. If, yeah. they, if they they're the defending champs, so. that's right. How about well, I guess continuing on with that, how much revenue must the Yankees make in order to be able to pull in that kind of a payroll? Wow. Like like Yankee Stadium or the new Yankee Stadium, uh, it's just it's insane. It must some be some, so of, some of Europe's top football clubs though are in the hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars of debt i don't know how that works either yeah. but big business man you big business do, do what you want <laughs> exactly um as you mentioned in your blog at curzy's notebook.blogspot.com visit oh, you today. read it i do oh, I, I read it as, as does everyone else i'm sure everyone here reads it uh the city of new york is already planning the parade mm. when they win the championship yes uh outrageous or just good planning from new york a city that you know is notorious for its great planning <laughs> well I guess at the end of the day, as as fun as it is to be like, look at these guys, I think they can, well, they're already planning the parade. It probably does take a lot of planning. Yeah. Uh, should you talk about it on your weekly radio show if you're the mayor of New York? No. Probably I would say not. So, yeah. yeah no, I, was, I would say probably not. Nobody likes that kind of jinx, you know. No. The Bloomberg jinx. <laughs> the Bloomberg jinx. I, you know, yeah, I guess good planning, but also like, come on. They could, all they have to do is go down the street. Who can't well, clear all the street? Close off the street, line up with security guards, boom. Yeah. You should go work for the New York City. That's think, that's perfect. You're right. <laughs> exactly. Out of you. Maybe we'll see. As we close uh, for this week, I'd like to say a few words. I know don't don't get too teared up. The I, pro I promise, mess it wouldn't do this. <laughs> the dearly departed Commonwealth Games. Uh, you were so good to us in our early videos. Uh, what with your snakes on the tennis courts, your poor water conditions, your lack of spectators, and Especially, this was my, I, I mean, the, the security monkey guards, you, you can't make yeah. that stuff up. Yeah. Delhi, uh, India, you, uh, you're going to be missed. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's our 15 minutes up for this week. Uh, join us uh, again next week when we get a whole new 15 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, check us out on Twitter at 15 Minutes YEG, on the 15 Minutes uh, YEG YouTube channel, or you can email us at 15 Minutes YEG at gmail.com. Do you notice a pattern? Yeah, 15 Minutes YEG, don't forget. Uh, make sure to check out my story on the uh, recent Commonwealth Games bronze medalist winner, Monique Sullivan, at anysportanytime.ca. And read Kersey's most recent blog, even though I know you always read them, but read them some more, <laughs> uh, at kerseysnotebook.blogspot.com. Thanks again for watching.